probably should have checked how to do this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to more Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, before we move on with the actual... Turning up the uh, thing here. Um, before we continue with the actual story, I kind of wanted to discuss the Ubisoft Forward event from yesterday. Um, I was actually planning to do this whole thing yesterday, but then I did um, random chores around my house, hung out with my niece, um, and played Infamous 2, and kind of just thought about what I was going to say. So. Move! Now! Do it! What's wrong with you? I'm waiting for my horse! Come on, yours. Anyway, um... Kind of getting back into what I was going to say. So I thought about the Ubisoft event because I was... irritated that we didn't really get anything related to the Prince of Persia remake which really kind of just continues to confirm for me it's over here oh I'm nowhere ready for that it kind of just continues to confirm for me that um, the game is basically dead and I know Ubisoft said oh no we're still working on it you know but I I, I don't know it the less information we get, the more anxious I get about it, and the more I start lowering my expectations. Because again, there was nothing wrong with the actual... Okay, good, the thing's not muted. <laughs> I have to check that every now and again. <laughs> there was nothing wrong with the game itself. In fact, the game was perfectly fine looking. All we got was an announcement trailer. And people decided to rip it another, or rip it a new one, all because it didn't look like the same level of quality or the same graphical quality as Assassin's Creed Valhalla, um, which that was more in terms of its art style. And I think the people reason that people thought, oh, you know. It looks like a PS3 game, you know, is because it used the same cell shading graphics from the last Prince of Persia game, or the same cell shading style from the last Prince of Persia game, The Forgotten Sands. Which, again, I think totally works for that, you know? But, you know, I just, it's fucking graphic snobs that piss me off, because we could have gotten this game, I could have played it, I could have streamed it, I could have had all sorts of fun with it, but now I don't even know if it's actually going to come out, you know? Like, the Ubisoft Forward wasn't just an Assassin's Creed event. They also, at the beginning, discussed a lot of other stuff. Nothing about Assassin's Creed, not even like an update saying like, oh, hey, you know, it's still in development. Um, we're just kind of, you know trying to not even explanation as to what actually happened you know because if it was just a pandemic and, and i tell people this I, I tell people this when i get on this topic if it was just a pandemic one we would have had it by now two they wouldn't have needed to change studios that's the thing that really really scares me and really make you know pisses me off you know and why i i don't blame ubisoft I don't blame Ubisoft. I figured that after Cyberpunk, they were going to delay the game. After the whole debacle that was Cyberpunk 2077, they would be crazy not if to have del delayed it at least a little bit. You know? Oh, hey, I think that's a Jewish star. Um, so, if, if it were just like a couple delays... Out to like a certain, I, I feel like if it were just because of the corona pandemic, you know, if it was because of COVID, we would have gotten it by now. 
by this year. It probably would be coming out, or would have come out in the summer, so as not to, like, correlate with the release of Sonic Frontiers, God of War, and Pokemon. You know? But we would have gotten it by now. But no, the fact that they delayed it indefinitely and then changed studios implies that this is more than just concerns over quality due to COVID-19. And I, I, I feel like I've ranted about this a hundred times. My concern is that It's. Oh, it was a syn. Oh, I was in a synagogue. Okay. Um. My concern is that it's probably with the graphical, or, or whatever changes they're making to shut up the graphic snobs and appease them. The game is going to definitely cost more. They're going to put it up to that sixty, seventy dollar price range that other games are going, and it'll probably be like the same quality as you know other games coming out but you know it never really needed to it, it never needed to it doesn't need to look like this it doesn't need to look like assassin's creed you know especially for a remake of a um yeah no or, or almost 20 year old game it, it didn't need to look like the new assassin's creed you know it, it didn't need to look like valhalla it didn't need to look like origins you know and uh, again there's no, there's nothing wrong with the shell stating art style there are lots of games that use that and in all honesty given the kind of story aspect of prince of persia that would absolutely work it works for it Cell shading actually works for it, you know? Not, I, I feel like there are plenty of great games out there that don't look like AAA blockbusters with inflated prices, you know? There are plenty of games out there that look great without being, or look and play great without being, you know, hyper-realistic. And, again, we, we, we only ever got an announcement trailer. We only ever got an announcement trailer, yet every yet all the graphic snobs hopped into the comments to shit on the game. And then, um... And then, just news outlets like frickin' What Culture and Game Rakes, Rinks kind of went off that and kind of said, like, yeah, you know, it doesn't look... You know, as good as it could. You know, we don't. What are they doing? Kind of thing. Similar with Halo Infinite, which, as much as that game definitely benefited from getting delayed and kind of fixing things up, you know, that game is kind of. Its multiplayer is floundering. Its multiplayer is floundering. So it's. So and. Kind of like going off or back onto like the things I'm concerned about. You know, it's the game's probably going to cost more now. So instead of it just being a forty dollar blast from the past, that will probably help to revitalize the franchise. Now Ubisoft's going to put more money into it, meaning that it's going to cost more. And that's not ultimately a bad thing, but given trends that Ubisoft has kind of followed in the past. The more expensive a game is to make, the more they need a return on investment. Which is why I think, which I still don't agree with it. I, I don't agree with microtransactions in full price games. But I'm, pr it's, I'm pretty sure it's the reason why the business side has said we need to, like, you know, put in microtransactions, you know, the Helix credits, blah, blah, blah. So, and then that's the other thing that I'm really worried about is that the game is going to get, you know, gonna have to have all these like microtransactions in it and um in order to kind of give ubisoft that return on investment um that they're gonna need from a game of what is probably now this magnitude this price and don't sit there and think oh they're not gonna throw in microtransactions just because the game's more expensive 
Where is it? This game came out what 2000 something. I actually don't remember what year this game came out, but it was it's literally got a freaking in-app purchase store. You spend money, you get you give Helix credits and you can buy all these different cosmetic and weapons packs. Like the wacky pack, which this would all just kind of just be stuff you could get in game, but normally if it were a normal video game, but we don't live in a world with just normal video games anymore. Now everything has to get microtransaction to hell. Oh my god, I feel so much better. Um. You know, time savers. What? What the fuck? You know. So, and this is what I'm worried about. This is, this is the shit that we're probably gonna get now that freaking now that the game is taking longer. Now that the game is basically going to be a much bigger investment for Ubisoft. They're going to want more oh, hey there's a, con a katana cool they're gonna want a bigger return on investment meaning that they're gonna shove in th they're gonna shove in microtransactions you know we're probably gonna have like a store where you can buy sand credits you know with real world money to get cosmetics like from assassin's creed or from the other Prince of Persia games. We play the Sands of Time as the Dark Prince. Blah, 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 you know? So, and... And then the game's... And then if that happens, you know, the game's just gonna get shit on even more. Because nobody fucking likes microtransactions. Nobody fucking likes microtransactions. It, it, it's a... At this point, it's a scientific fact that... Well, yes, we do give in to them. I, when I played Fortnite, bought the fucking Goku skin... You know, so I could go around Fortnite playing as Goku. I, I don't like microtransactions, but in in my paid video games, you know, again, that's a free video game. You know, and same thing with Halo Infinite's multiplayer. It's free. So it's at least a little more forgivable than just like, oh, you know, this. And I, I'm ashamed to say that I bought this, uh, I think like, Shinobi pack in Valhalla. Bought the Shinobi pack in Valhalla, and I'm just like, oh, blah blah blah. Or, or, oh, you know, it's I, I like uh, Japanese stuff. You know, I have katanas at home. Maybe I want to go around dual wielding katanas. Like, this isn't time place accurate. So, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I have all this worry about the remake because I love the Prince of Persia franchise so much. I got into it in, like, middle school. Um, uh, high school, I want to say. Actually, yeah, I think it was high school. I, I, or I got into it when I was a teenager, and it was so awesome. And, you know, I, I just, I want the game, or I want the remake to be good. But good does not mean hyper realistic or pretty in my eyes. Because I, if y'all remember, like, I went out of my way to get the remake of, or, not, not, or the re release of Corpse Party on Switch. I went and set up a whole Japanese eShop just to get that. And then, like, a few days later, turns out that it was coming west side anyway but then i bought that the english version on ps4 to support um you know exceed because you know it absolutely you know i'm not getting to that that just so uh, but a game doesn't need to look absolutely fucking hyper realistic amazing to be an amazing game you know i mean and i feel like corpse party is a good example of that Another good example of that is Fatal Frame, you know, like, um, 
like made in a black water that just got re-released on everything uh last year that was a wii u game wii u games for the most part are absolute garbage but fatal frame looked nice but it didn't look hyper realistic you know it looked realistic enough you know like the improvements made but a game needs to have good gameplay in order to, you know, actually be a good game. Do absolutely does not help if the visuals are great, but you also have to consider art style and stuff, you know? So, I mean, I just... There's a lot of examples of great video games out there that don't look all the fucking same, you know? And I I'm so sick and tired of graphic snobs shitting on everything. Because that's who I blame for this. I don't blame Ubisoft. Again, I figure there's going to be a, a couple delays due to COVID. They would have been insane, especially after the Cyberpunk debacle. They would have been insane not to at least have delayed it to this year, you know? But, again, an indefinite delay, pulling it from storefronts and changing studios that's way more than just oh COVID-19 no no they got spooked the publisher the business side got spooked and now, now they're forcing the developers to completely overhaul the game because they're afraid that they're not going to get the return on investment so they're putting more money into it and now they're going to want a bigger return on investment and I'm just I'm worried I, I really am and if if the damn graphic snobs just shut their fucking mouths and all go into the little holes on PC and or, or all just went over to PC, crawl into their little holes and mod it to make the book the way they want afterwards, because you know they're going to do that anyway. You know they have... I don't want to say every single modder on PC is a graphic snob, because that's not true. You actually have some really cool modders who do some amazing stuff and I respect I respect the hell out of that you know I really do if I could actually put up with PC gaming I would use the hell out of mods like throwing Kermit the Frog into Spider-Man Remastered or again going back to Spider-Man Remastered Ezio Auditore um, because those are mods and uh, some mods on PC do get nuts and it, that's cool that that's what I respect but then you get the modders who are like oh I think I can make this game look better you know because I don't like the way that it looks I don't care what how much time they put into it you know I'm gonna make this you know game that just came out is probably gonna get like patched to fix any issues you know or whatever I'm, I'm gonna try and make it look better you know because, or I'm going to try and change the art style because I don't respect what developers do, you know? So you know that there's going to be that subset of modder who's going to do that. And if people were really upset with the way the remake looked, because the game was it was coming out on PC, they could have just gone over to PC and built some kind of mod to make it look hyper-realistic. Then they go go back to sucking their dicks and enjoying freaking you know their, their own self-hatred you know I went the hell out of my way to get the original three Prince of Persia games for PS2 kind of going off my hatred for graphic snobs and I'm pretty sure that whole trip down to like the like the remote part of the state I live in because that was the only store that had the games uh, or like the first game or what I thought was going to be the PS3 uh remasters, but they didn't, so I had to get the PS2 ones, which I have a PS2, so that's not. But I went all the way out of my way and, like, on this big journey to Meriden, or, like, near Meriden, and I ended up taking a bus, an Uber, and stopping at a mall, and then take, um, or I ended up taking an Uber, to the store, and then I took another Uber to the mall so I could try and catch the bus home, but the bus stopped at a weird place and I missed my tr uh, transit, so I had to take another another um 
Ah, uh, frick, 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 frick. Uh, another Uber home, and I'm pretty sure somewhere along the way I got COVID. So I blame graphic snaps for that. But that's also partially because I, um, because I got COVID, I had to go into quarantine and I ended up like ruining my family's home. Um, 4th of July plans, and nobody blames me, but, you know, I just still, I, I feel like I would not have gotten COVID if I hadn't gone on that little odyssey just to get three freaking video games, you know? So I blame graphic snaps for that. So I, I don't know, it's just, I, I think if people started to, like, yes, if, if a game actually needs to be fixed and developers are doing jack shit, I absolutely support modders stepping in and flexing their muscles, saying, Oh, well, if you're not going to do it, I guess it's up to me. You know, fine, I'll do it myself. You know, that kind of Thanos spirit. But I, I, th I feel like I feel like there are people in the gaming community who need to respect art style. They need to learn to respect art style, and it's a shame that they don't. You know? Like, and I feel like if they did, you know... I feel like the gaming community wouldn't be as toxic. It's probably just a smidgen less toxic. Not a lot, because, you know, you have people who are, like, homophobes editing out pride flags to try and throw in extra American flags, even though the Spider-Man remaster had American flags. You know. That's, an, that's just hateful people having too much power. That's... I, I don't equate graphic snobs to the people who tried to remove the pri or who made the mod to remove the pride flags from Spider-Man Remaster, um, to throw in extra American flags. That's I, I, I don't equate it to. I, th those aren't graphic snobs. Granted, a few graphic snobs may also be homophobes, but that's that's an entirely separate issue. But I, I, I don't know. I, I just. The only thing Prince of Persia that got announced, and this is kind of me transitioning after 20 or so minutes ranting about this. I'm going to clip this and share it, by the way. Uh, crazy guy rants about Prince of Persia for 20 minutes. Um, this is kind of a good way to transition to the actual Ubisoft forward. Uh, and what they did with Assassin's Creed. The only thing Prince of Persia that was shown during the forward is for Assassin's Creed Mirage, one of the pre-order bonuses, at least for the Collector's Edition, which I am not getting because it's got a fucking steel book with no disc! What the One of the pre-order bonuses for Assassin's Creed Mirage is a Prince of Persia outfit inspired by the first game. A short sword based off the Dagger of Time. Oh shit, for Um, uh, oh, um, a scimitar based off one of the swords from the Prince of Persia series. I wasn't 100% sure if it's the King's Sword, which actually was an Odyssey along with the Dagger of Time. Um, or if it was one of the swords from the first game. And then a skin for, I'm guessing, your eagle companion and... Crap. Um, or for your eagle companion and your mount that make it look... I, I feel like they were going for Sand Demon, but they honestly remind me more of the Dark Prince. But either way, so that was the only thing that was Prince of Persia related, which, I mean, that was already good. Despite my gripes with Odyssey and Valhalla, I, do, I am going to be definitely like mirage actually looks like a return to form which again going back to <laughs> um the actual ubisoft forward now um or going to the actual ubisoft forward the assassin's creed event um assassin's creed mirage appears to be a game 
that is essentially um, the origin story of Basim um, from Valhalla, the hidden one who is the, which is the precursor name for the assassins, um, the hidden one who, um, oh, that's not what I wanted to do, I actually wanted to get some action. You will pay, corpse. Oh, that was cool. Oh, fuck. Ha! Anyway, um... The... Uh, uh, Mirage, which was leaked a few days before the event, and then had to be announced a few days before the event. Mirage is basically an origin story for Basim, the hidden one... One of the hidden one contacts from, uh, Valhalla. And, he, um, it's basically showing his rise from... A, I um, for lack of a better term, a street rat in Baghdad, to a master assassin, um, in the Hidden Ones, and because like the open the trailer didn't just show like his training and him like being rescued by a Hidden One, it also showed his basically a initiation ceremony where, um through his own hands to show his own commitment and he amputates his ring finger um, so he can utilize the hidden blade which again they, uh, I don't know, Origins will explain that whole thing a little more down the line why that actually became a uh, a um, tradition but again, it, 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 like that tradition did stem from Basim, or uh, not Basim, Bayek accidentally cutting off his uh, ring finger. It, it was an experience with the Hidden Blade. Um, so that was the, um, that, that was Odyssey, or not Odyssey, that was Assassin's Creed Mirage. So that one is going to be kind of a, uh, um, an origin story, which comes out next year. I'm hoping not in the holiday period, like, I'm hoping that that's, like, a spring release, or maybe a January release. I don't know. Um, we also got some more information about Valhalla's DLC. They have one more little thing, because, you know, they just had Dawn of Ragnarok, and the... I, I'm not, I've never played a roguelike game, but Do uh, Dawn of Ragnarok, and then the roguelike expansion, like, the Trials of Surtur or something... I don't know. Um, again, I, 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 I have, I d didn't actually look that much into it, but I haven't picked up Dawn of Ragnarok because that was like half the price of the game, and you know, I'm just like, well, you know, maybe wait for it to go on sale. And now it's on sale, so I'm just kind of wait, um, trying to get the guts to pull that trigger. <laughs> um, so that was that one. Um, and then with a oh, Twitter, um, but it, th there's one more DLC for Valhalla called like the End of Eivor's Saga. It, it's basically um, um, Odin or, or Eivor decide or Eivor decides to leave the Raven Clan behind and kind of like go on this journey of self-reflection self-discovery also dealing with uh odin trying to take over uh, their body um so that is that's interesting um but moving on or, but yeah so that's the last expansion and then i think at some point through Again, the in-app purchase store is supposed to get an Iron Man-inspired armor. I don't know if that's come out yet. I'm, after the stream, I'm going to pop in Valhalla and see if it's already come out. I don't know, they haven't announced anything. But anyway, um... But that was, like, for data miners and leaks and whatnot. So anyway, but, um... Kind of returning, or... 
So, ah, so Valhalla, that's the last thing. That's the next Assassin's Creed coming out this uh, thing coming out this year. And then Mirage is sometime in 2023. And then um, down the road, um, they've got some other stuff coming out, like a Netflix TV series, I think a documentary, um, some of uh, Assassin or the Assassin's Creed Symphony. Um, and then they also said that they have a mobile game coming out uh, called Assassin's Creed Codenamed Jade Empire, which takes place in China. Um, and I think, given the, the current name, um, um, or, or I, actually, I think they confirmed that it's going to take place uh, in China. At some point, I thought it was going to be a game uh, featuring um, Xiao Yun, but looks like no, it's not going to be a game featuring Xiao Yun, which stinks because she's an interesting character, and we only got one kind of arcade-like uh, 2.5D game about her after her appearance in um, Assassin's Creed Embers. Um, so, you know, we have that coming. That's a mobile game, which is supposed to be using touch controls, but I, I get the feeling they're going to have some kind of, like, backbone support for, like, those controllers, and I feel like that's going to be the best way to play it. Or the most natural way to play it. Um, and then they showed two more games that are still in development, where they showed, like, a key, like, visuals and like trailers the first one was code name i want to say be dealt with quickly let's say code name red um should got my phone now to double check uh somebody was ranting about it um oh wait you know what no this is actually okay here we go um the this ties into Assassin's Creed Infinity, which I'll kind of, like, comment on in a second. Um, uh, Assassin's Creed Codename Red is basically what people have been wanting. And, and they commented on this, because this has been one of the most requested uh, locations in um, Assassin's... Or in, like... By, by the fandom in the entirety of Assassin's Creed. It takes place in feudal Japan, and you'll be playing as a shinobi who is also a member of the Assassin's Brotherhood. Um, whether or not this will be during the era of the Hidden Ones, um, or if it'll be after the Assassin's like Reformation, where um, after... Da um, you know, after the Crusades and after Altair's kind of restructuring of the traditions of the Brotherhood. Um, you know, it, 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 if, if it'll be basically... They, they said Feudal Japan, but Feudal Japan encompasses a few different eras. Um, but you're going to be playing as a shinobi, so they, they kind of like refer to it as a shinobi power fantasy. Um, which... You know, that's actually pretty cool. I feel like, um, that would actually, or that would actually work. It's kind of like, a few of the most recent Assassin's Creed games have kind of been power fantasies. Uh, Valhalla and Odyssey, for example. They're not really, you're not really assassins. You're people who... Or you're, you're, you're basically people who just have like a very minor link to the Brotherhood, either before its creation, because Odyssey is a prequel to Origins, or after its creation, uh, like you know Valhalla. Um, but yeah, those are definitely power fantasies. Um, especially since in Odyssey you have a magic sword. Or, no, or um, uh, you have the Spear of Leonidas, which is a piece of Eden. Um, oh my god. So, but yeah, so that's coming sometime after Mirage. 
Um, and then they announced another one um, that will follow Shinobi um, called Assassin's Creed Code Hexy, which we actually know very little about. Um, but given the wooded appearance, um, the name, or the wooded appearance of the trailer, the name, and the Assassin's logo kind of being made out of, um, or being hung from a tree and made from, a uh, wood, this is either going to take place in Europe or the Americas, but... It's going to take place during a witch trial. Um, or, like, one of the witch trials. There have been dozens of those um, throughout history, but I think the one that they might do, given the... Uh, just kind of how big it was, and how little the actual events are focused on in history or, or like in like media like i think there have been a couple things especially based off of um uh, a book which whose name i can't remember i i, I think assassin's creed hexe which is how they're pronouncing it i want to say hex but i think it's hex hexe i think it's going to take place during the salem witch trials um or I think it's like Assassin's Creed code name Hexe. Again, a couple of these games which are still kind of in development. Um, don't I don't think they have official titles yet, but Assassin's Creed code name Hexe. I think that's going to take place during the Salem Witch Trials, or if not those Witch Trials, one of kind of the first Witch Trials. But that's my that's my theory. I think it's going to involve like some Wiccan traditions, some paganism, and the kind of like the persecution of people who may or may not have been practitioners of um, like or, or who may or may not have been witches, who may or may not have been practitioners of um, Wiccan. Um, traditions because that's kind of all those things were less about hunting down practitioners oh shit the fucking falakitai those trials were less about um like bringing justice and more about blind persecution especially in Salem and in the American witch trials uh, oh fuck Oh, run, Bayek! Yours! Run! Run, yours! Run! Oh, yeah, I got that arrow. Um, the witch trials, especially in the Americas and with the Salem witch trial, those are more about persecution. Um, whether or not they were to kind of shift blame from... young women who may or may not have, or who might or might not have been acting out, um, and just kind of, like, going wild, um, during our time. You know, if it was, like, persecution of political or anti-religious rivals, or people who just stood against, you know, the way the witch trials were being conducted, it was mainly persecution, and... Actually, the most famous thing concerning the Salem Witch Trials is the name that I can't remember um, was written by someone who became a pariah and got blacklisted during... Um... Oh my fucking god, I can't remember that. Oh my god, the fucking Animaniacs Pinky in the Brain did like a fucking parody of it. Um, oh my god, this is gonna drive me up a fucking wall if I don't...
literature, media, and pop culture. The Crucible! Jesus fucking Christ. The Crucible by, is what I'm thinking of, by Arthur Miller. Um, um, which served as an allegory for McCarthyism. Um, so, I mean, there have been plenty of, like, the fucking Wikipedia article I pulled up. Um, actually had more than just that as kind of, like, uh, examples of media that kind of looked at the Salem witch trials. But a lot of them have been dramatization or dramatizations or dramatizations. Why am I having trouble pronouncing that word? Or why was I having trouble pronouncing that word? Um, but yeah, those were uh, dramatizations and that kind of took liberties with it, especially the Crucible, which again was an allegory for McCarthyism. So I feel like if they're going, if if Assassin's Creed Codename Hexe is going to be set during the Salem Witch Trials, I think it's going to take an actual, or try to, because plenty of people pointed out that, oh, Assassin's Creed doesn't always have to do the best job when it comes to, uh, you know, representing history, you know. But in some cases, it gets a lot closer than other stuff. <clears throat> Pirate era. <clears throat> um, but anyway, um... So, Codename Hexe is, you know, I feel like if they are going to be doing the Salem Witch Trials, they're going to take it, or they're going to put the air under a lot more scrutiny and actually try and take the actual historical events, and then probably be less dramatized, or dra dramatized, uh, less dramatic than other stuff, but also probably incorporate that, um, Assassin's Creed flair, especially with kind of the bleeding in of some of the mystic elements from games like Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, again, we don't really know anything except a title, a trailer, or, or like a trailer that really doesn't show a lot, and a name. Or yeah, a title, a trailer, and just that's coming out as a part of Assassin's Creed Infinity. And that was the other thing that I was kind of, like, excited to know about. And I'm actually... It's put my mind more at ease. Um, and this is kind of the other big thing that they were talking about. Assassin's Creed Infinity isn't going to be a live-service game. Um, well, yes, they'll kind of, like... Or, well, yes, uh, Assassin's Creed, um, codenamed uh, Red and codenamed Hexe are going to be kind of under Infinity's uh, wheelhouse. It, from the way that they were putting it, and we'll probably see more of this in the future as we get closer to Assassin's Creed Infinity becoming a thing, it's less of a live service game like Fortnite, Apex Legends, or PUBG, and more of just a live service in general. Um, now, they did say that they were looking into bringing back multiplayer as a part of Infinity, but it sounds more like Infinity is going to be like, I think for lack of a better term, like a social media that will kind of allow people to play together um, more seamlessly um and carry across or and like you know basically interact with the franchise in ways they haven't before um like again i i like the way that they were talking about it i thought oh so it's going to be an assassin's creed social media you know that's kind of that's where my brain went with it and you know if it's really not gonna like it probably will have microtransactions, but if it's not actually going to affect the production of games and it's more of just like a connectivity service, I say, you know what? 
go go for it. But just don't let the games that you make in the future suffer because of infinity. That's all I would say about that. And hopefully, hopefully, you know, or Twitter, you know, hopefully they will kind of have a good balance between, you know, um, what we expect from the franchise and or, or what we expect from the franchise as a whole and what they kind of want to achieve with infinity so that's kind of you know i haven't assassinated anyone today let's go assassinate i'm kind of hoping that as we get closer to it, they'll explain more. And with all the games that kind of have just code names right now, I feel like those games, like Codename Jade, Codename Red, Codename uh, Hexe, those are definitely going to be under Infinity's banner as like being a part of not really the service but really just kind of like those will be games that have the ability to connect up with whatever they're doing with infinity so like they'll be a part of that and then for the most part that's really all that stuck out to me um with the uh ubisoft forward and the assassin's creed event also it's been 15 years since assassin's creed came out nothing really mentioned i feel like if they were going to do a remake of assassin's creed 1 that would have been the time to do it or bring it up but it doesn't look like they're doing that and you know as, as different of a game as assassin's creed 1 is to like, even Assassin's Creed 2 and what they have now, it, I, I, it still, I feel, holds up a degree. I don't know. I, I, f I found the game at a family dollar for two bucks and for PS3. I just haven't played it again in a while. No, seriously. Seriously. Fucking dollar the family dollar they have like a dvd section and in that dv or like and they have a movie section and in that movie like section you could find video games and i found assassin's creed and i picked it up and i was like oh my god i can't believe that they actually have this so <sighs> okay um But, yeah, um, so this whole thing kind of turned in less into uh, a Let's Play episode and more into um, me ranting about Prince of Persia and then discussing the Ubisoft forward. So I think, hold on, there we go. There we go, I feel better now. I think I'm going to wrap it up here, take a break. Um, rest my uh, trigger finger because I've been using it to try and run this whole time. Just out of force of habit. Um, and then uh, I will a little later um, play or, or do another origin stream. But until then, I hope you all have a very good day.